Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, addicts of all ages, welcome to Canadian Sober, eh? I'm your host and resident alcoholic, Dougie Fresh. Well, so glad you're with us today. I have a fantastic guest lined up today. I, I've been trying to get this person on this show for three years, and with the stuff that she's been so busy with, it's been like pulling teeth. Like, I've just been like, I've been so anxious and awaiting this person's arrival that I'm just so blessed that she's here today. But before we get to her, I'd like to welcome you to the show wherever you are today. Um, thank you so much for joining in and, and, and listening in. I hope you get some, some you know, a story or, or something that you can relate to, a message of hope. Um, that's really what we're gearing for today. So, um, you know, this individual who I'm just about to introduce gave me a quote a couple of weeks ago. And the quote was, when you're going through sobriety, be prepared to suck at everything else. And I couldn't agree more. Um, you know, when I got sober, it was like learning how to be human again, you know, learning how to drive, learning how to interact with people. Um, you know, uh, I realized I suck dancing, you know, and I, so I had to relearn how to like dance, uh, you know, like, um, but one thing I, uh, I learned was that I can still have fun today without drinking or drugging. And, um, and so I, I've learned that about myself uh, uh, among many, many other things. But, uh, but I'm so glad that, uh, that she told me that quote and I related it to it so much. So, um, please Canadian sober a world, please welcome Lindsay, Lindsay. Thank you for joining us today on Canadian <laughs> Sober. It's been a long We're time. We're here. Here. Um, so please, please um, introduce yourself to uh, to our our family and uh, and please uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. And I will shut up now. <laughs> First of all, thank you very much for having me. I'm I'm glad that we could finally connect on, connect together. Um, so my name is Lindsay Sutherland Bowl. I am the founder of She Walks Canada, and the founder of the upcoming app, the Uncovery app. And so I have been living alcohol free uh, for over four years, and I had a problematic relationship with alcohol for a decade uh, before I quit and. I tried to quit drinking seven times or six times before it stuck the seventh time. And um, I had had so many failed attempts that I just thought that alcohol was going to be how I would deal with my life forever. I, I just couldn't figure out how to not drink every night. And then, you know, I, I never really hit a rock bottom. I wasn't one of those one of those gals that that did but um that didn't mean i i was immune to blowing up my life like i had there were some casualties in in my in my life and in fact i lost to that point the most important thing to me uh which was my operatic career that i had spent a decade uh honing and i certainly worked overseas uh and in canada and i i blew that up um, not because I was, you know, drunk on stage or anything like that, but I was certainly drunk at the parties in between and the parties in between are the people that hire, you know? And so that was a pretty bitter pill for me to swallow, uh, for a long time. But when I, uh, decided to stop drinking on January 24, 2020, I'll never forget it. Uh, it was the night after a fairly average night of drinking um i had gone to see the fan of the opera and i had some friends that were in the show and i bought tickets to it to go in with a friend of mine who and this was typical behavior for me at the time i didn't bother to tell this individual that i was buying the tickets for what night i had just assumed that because i bought the tickets they would be available and of course that wasn't the case and so they weren't able to go i got upset i, I had two bottles of wine before i even went to dinner with the girl i was going with and um yeah, I got to the show. Yeah, I saw my friends, but I don't remember how I got home. I don't remember where my keys were. I don't remember what happened because I blacked out, right? Because that's just what happens. And then when I woke up that next morning at, at 6 a.m. with the 3 a.m. shame game still fully intact, um, I walked down to my kitchen and I started calling out all the things in my kitchen that I hated. I said, I hate that teacup. I hate that tea towel. I hate that coffee machine. I couldn't believe how many words that were coming out of my mouth that were the word hate. And I never thought of myself as a hateful person. 
But then I realized that all the things in my kitchen that I hated, I put there. And then I realized that if I could put those things there, I had the power to unput them there. And I never drank again. And then came the process of recovery for me that was a part of my journey. And, um, and for that day forward, I walked every day. And that was a part of what started to work for me was just to get outside and move my thoughts and my mind and my body. And, and I remember the first day I felt like such a hero because I walked a kilometer. I actually did something good for my body, mind and spirit. And, um, and so every day I walked a little bit further. So by the time I got to 11 months, I was walking 10K every day. And I was in the fittest shape of my life. And I was the most mentally clear I'd ever been. And, um, and when I decided to celebrate 365 days, I was very, very private about my journey because I'd failed so many times before, right? And when I decided to celebrate 365 days, I wanted to go on a big, long walk because that's what I was doing at the time. And I used the home addresses of the seven women that stood up and supported me that year. And when I collected all of their email addresses and put it into Google Maps, it came out to 36.5 kilometers. And I thought, well, that's what I should be doing on 365 days. And so I went on that big walk. And when I, on that day, I had made the decision to not only talk, talk about this problem, but to cross post across everything, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. I was coming out professionally that I had ha had overcome this issue and all of my professional associates who I talked to ahead of time, because I didn't want them to find out on social media. They said, Lindsay, you are committing career suicide. You will never work again. Mm -hmm. And when I posted that, that was the slowest post of my life. And I knew that I would come home, even though it was the best day of my life, doing that walk because I was so empowered and so proud of myself. I came home and I knew that I was going to lose friends. I knew I was going to lose connections. And I opened up my computer and I had 7,000 messages of support. Wow. And like, I know seven people. Right? And so, so uh, that was my first thought that I needed to talk about this because something I was doing was resonating. And so when uh, I don't know, somewhere in my second year, um, I wanted to find a way to um, help women, because I really identified with women, help women not feel as alone as I did, because that was what kept me drinking, was being alone in my living room, exactly where alcohol wanted to keep me. And I didn't want to do that anymore, and I couldn't be the only one. So... Yeah. I decided that I was gonna create a collective and try and walk across Canada, why not? <laughs> and so I, I started She Walks Canada with the intent to provide, at this time I had become a certified um, coach and I uh, collected some of my sober coach pals and I said, listen, will you be willing to coach on this platform? And we're gonna attempt to walk across Canada in seven months and it was completely unknown nobody knew who i was and so in that seven months not only did we walk across canada once we crossed canada three times wow and we helped 600 women in their journeys to get alcohol free through our coaching and so when the second year came around last year we said okay well, what can we do because we crossed canada what now now what <laughs> now what and so it was still touch and go with where people could feel comfortable connecting and so we said okay well why don't we circumnavigate the globe in half the time i was kidding when i said that and my team said great idea so and so off we went and um and sure enough Six days shy of our 100 day goal in 94 days, we circumnavigated the goal, the globe, 40,070 kilometers. And by this point, we had helped 2,000 women. Wow. And so this year, um, we are for the first time taking it up another notch, but we're walking real life in person. And I hoped that in this 100 days, we would have 50 walks. That was my dream. Let's do 50 walks in 14 weeks on Sundays between March 16th, or sorry, March 17th and June 16th. And within three weeks, we had 203 walks across North America. Yes. And um, there's, I don't know, 40, 48 ambassadors, She Walks Canada ambassadors in North America that are women 
that are walking in their communities um, because we can and believe that we can overcome over drinking together. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So that was She Walks Canada. And the Uncovery app that's coming up is is She Walks Canada on, on steroids a little bit um, because it's the opportunity for me to coach a lot more in that platform and do more than what I can on Instagram. And it satisfies the anonymity requirement uh, for so many women. And so really it's an empowerment app through the lens of alcohol-free living for women. That's it. That's, uh, I, I'm like, my mind right now is kind of just like trying to take everything you just said in. And, you know, I have to be honest with you, Lindsay, like, um, probably like during the COVID pandemic, I, I decided I, I was going to a Zoom meeting. I met about a handful of people that I saw what they were doing in their communities. And I was, I was set. I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to try to do something in my community and like in my community, it kind of backfired a little bit for the first like year or two. Like, you know, like people yeah. were just really, really weren't with the whole recovery out loud thing um, and, and kind of like, you know, uh, shunned away from it, um, you know, but I have to say like you're I've been following you now for a little while and, and you're probably, you know, in, in a top 10 of, of people that, you know, like I, I constantly watch what you're doing. I'm like, look at what these people yourself included are doing in their communities to help people in recovery. And it just inspires me. Right. So if you're doing things like she walks Canada and this uncovery app, like imagine the people you're inspiring to, to just keep going and keep pushing. Um, mm -hmm. I'm glad you brought up the, the, the part about anonymity, uh, you know, like, because that's really big in a lot of people's, um, uh, careers and a lot of people's lives, you know, they don't want you, you mentioned it yourself, mm -hmm. you know, people that find out that you're all of a sudden on sober, on, on a sober trail now, uh, might not necessarily be too keen to that. So can you tell me a little bit about, um, what it's been like with working with some of the people that maybe, you know, don't want to recover out loud. Um, and then maybe talk about, um, you know, that moment where I know you kind of mentioned a little bit, but that moment where you were like, okay, this is what I'm doing. And I don't care what anybody says, you know, Great. like, how did you feel? Okay. Well, there's a story there too. So with, so it's two part question. So to answer the recovery out loud situation, I fully respect, and I know you and I do, cause you and I share so many of the same opinions about this as many people do in whether someone chooses to recover out loud is so it's such a personal choice. Right. And there's way more factors involved with just wanting to support other people in their journeys. Like some jobs are really going to take a hit. Like there's just some some communities, some industries that are just not going to be receptive to someone speaking that they had a problem. Like, for example, somebody in, in healthcare, like that's going to be a real challenge. Right. So to speak out loud about it is such a personal choice. And and you and I, and I know a bunch of us respect anybody who, who makes whatever decision they they do for themselves. Uh the second part of that question, what was the second part? It was it was working with people that um that want to keep their anonymity, like uh mm -hmm. don't want to really recover out loud, but necessarily like you're you're trying to keep their anonymity safe and at the same time, you know, maybe working with people that are recovering out loud. And so like, what are the kind of some of the challenges that you come up with, with that? Well, I just keep everybody. If I, it's whenever I see anybody on the street, if I pretend I don't know them unless they talk to me, <laughs> right? If they want to engage with me, then, then they can engage with me. It is it. I will never out anybody, you know, like that's, that's what happens in recovery meetings. All of us hold secrets, <laughs> people all over the world and we know it's safe. Mm. So, so that's, that's that bit there. But with respect to um, work, like when I was told that I would never work again, mm -hmm. uh, that scared me, you know, because I we all need to make a living, right? And I remember that I was leaving the job that I was in when I came out about having a drinking problem. And I was leaving that job because it was in business development in the construction industry. Like it's male alpha drinking, not where I wanted to be at all. And so I wanted to get into health and wellness. And I was working with She Walk Canada at the time, but it's a completely volunteer organization. And so it's not 
a, a money maker, a revenue generator at all, right? And so I needed to to have a job, and so I couldn't find one. And I am uh, considerably well educated. I went to university for thirteen years. Um, I have a big uh, resume of public speaking, of writing, of just a bunch of things. And I was a television and film actor. Like I've just gotten done a lot of stuff and I couldn't get a job. And the only job that I was offered was selling athletic wear in a mall 40 minutes from here doing part time. Mm. And I said, I'm not doing this. And I just knew that I had more to offer. And so I had to put all of my eggs into the, this one basket. And I think it's going to work out. I, 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 I hope it works out, you know, for you. Like I <laughs> respect mm -hmm. that. Um, when you decided, when you made that decision that you were like, I'm going to, I'm going to recover out loud. I don't care what anybody's going to say. Mm -hmm. Was there a moment? Because I want you to talk to the, maybe the future Lindsay that's sitting here watching this show right now. Um, who's maybe thinking of, of doing this, mm -hmm. you know, what would you tell that future Lindsay that's sitting here right now thinking about, you know what, I'm going to recover out loud, just like Lindsay. And I'm going to, I'm going to do this. Like, would you tell them to do it? Or was that moment, was there a moment in your time when you did it and you were like, crap, like maybe I shouldn't have done that? Yeah, um, I would say, and I've, I've talked about this a lot, that it was the slowest post of my life. <laughs> you know, <what> I mean? <laughs> I mean, it was that. I never regretted making the decision, ever. I mm. never regretted making the decision because so many of us, um, when we, when we commit to the process of personal development and we're not, you know, willpowering our way through white knuckling, which is no joy, but when we commit to the process, we, there's just, there's just, everything is so much better. There's so much joy. There's so much peace. There's so much love. There's so much opportunity. There's so much connection. There's just, everything is like, it explodes in technicolor. And so, no, I don't have any qualms about that at all. Um, the only, the only, and I, I don't mean to advise you, but you've asked me the question, is that if you are going to speak out publicly, consider the platforms on which you're doing that. And if it's a work thing, you got to talk to your boss, <laughs> just say, this is what I'm going to do. Um, and and talk to the people who have a vested interest in your well-being ahead of time, because you don't want them to find out about it on a social media post, because they may feel that you didn't consider them. And they would be like, oh, I didn't know. And then they're going to feel bad. You know, there's a bit of that. But I, for me, it was obviously the best decision of my life. And I had no idea she walks Canada. It wasn't even on the radar mm. at the time. But there was something in me that I knew, I, there was a knowing. I knew that I needed to talk about it. Yeah. And if there are other women out there that are like, should I do this? Connect with me. She wants Canada. I'll talk to you. I will talk to you. I talk to everybody who wants to talk to me. That, that's fantastic. Um, yeah. I, I, I was three months sober when I, when I started the job that I have now. Okay. Um, and, uh, and it was really kind of terrifying to like go into a new workplace, kind of like keep quiet about who I am and and not let let anybody know that you know maybe I, I had an issue or had a problem um and i confided in 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 somebody there and not really knowing the environment you know within a week most of the most of the plant i work at knew i was i was in recovery um yeah. you know and and that was really hard to kind of juggle and maintain you know so i can just imagine you know like your feelings and everything at that time mm -hmm. uh you know but the more and more I, I, I've been in that job, the more and more I've seen people um, not only respect um, what I do, um, but encourage what I do. And it's been a really kind of like peace of mind, uh, not having to have that judgment over top of my head about like, oh, well, don't talk to Doug because Doug's you know, in recovery and we don't trust people who don't drink today, right? You know, and, and I find that there's, there's that stigma in, in a workplace. And you mentioned, you know, construction and everything. There's that stigma, you know, of the guys going to the bar after work, you know, and have a couple of brewskis and, and things like that. Um, you know, but one of the questions I want to ask you is um, when you started, she walks Canada and all of these women are like emailing you and like wanting to join and do all this stuff. 
Um, there's been some sort of a craze I've heard about in the past couple of years about the mommy wine culture. You know, um, did, do you think you were like attracting a lot of like women that were just sitting at home, babysitting kids or doing whatever that were just like, I want to get out of this lifestyle. I don't want to drink anymore, you know, or they would have like these social functions over, um, you know, and, and just drink wine kind of like all day. Was it, was there anything like that? Is your question, was I attracting the mummy wine culture? Yeah. Okay. It's a great question. So when we were first building She Walks Canada, we had to think about our, we called her our avatar. Like, who are we speaking to? And mm -hmm. so we called her Rachel. And we talked about Rachel that she was somewhere between 35 and 45, or 40 and like 37, 40, 45, um, uh, just a bit of an older mom, like not the 20 year old, but just a little bit older. Um, so she had a career and was probably at home with her kids, having a bit of an identity crisis with nothing to do because now she's just a mom, um, and having wine in her tumbler. And, and that was our demographic. That's absolutely who we were going for at the beginning. Um, and boy, were we wrong. Uh, because what we have learned over time is that our demographic is actually from 35 to 78. Wow. Yes. And our strongest growing cohort is over 60. Get out. And, and our, our community is um, culturally diverse, ability diverse, age diverse, um, uh, nationality diverse. Like what we've realized is it's everybody and mm. it's everywhere. And so sure. Yeah, of course we hit the mommy wine culture, but that is just one small segment. Yeah. Uh, there's so many other um, things going on in the world today that, you know, um, almost encourage drinking and, uh, and other, other substances and stuff like that. Um, I've always said, you know, you see these commercials on TV that show everybody sitting by a poolside and they're all having martinis and, you know, beers and everything like that. But nobody shows you the aftermath. Nobody shows you what happens when the camera shuts off and, and you're with your family and you're doing all this stuff. And I can only imagine, um, you know, I've always said, and I, and I know, you know, you didn't have that huge, you know, like rock bottom thing, um, you know, but I've always said everybody hits a rock bottom in their own right. You know, everybody, yes. will, everybody will, doesn't matter. Like you don't have to lose the house and lose the car and get divorced and, you know, get a DUI and do all this stuff. Like if you're sitting at home right now and you're listening to Lindsay and I chat, you know, if, if you, for some inkling think that you have a problem with substance abuse or, or, or alcohol or anything like that, you don't have to lose it all to say, you know, like, I think I need help, you know? And I think that's a big conversation that needs to happen within the recovery community, because I know a lot of people in recovery here that all believe that, you know, because they haven't had it as bad as her, or they haven't had it as bad as this person, maybe they're not an, an addict or an alcoholic. So what would you say to that? You don't have to hit rock bottom, rock enough will do. Yeah. Oh, that's a great quote. I'm going to write that down. It's mine. Oh. And further, um, why is that a benchmark? Yes. 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 That's that's a great, great, um, you know, conversation piece. I think a lot of people need to hear that. Um, yeah. Because this is this is what it was. It's like I I distinctly remember saying to myself exactly what you just said. My drinking isn't that bad. This is this is what I said to myself. My drinking isn't that bad because I haven't got a DUI. My drinking isn't that bad because I've never driven drunk with my kid in the car. My drinking isn't that bad because I'm not as bad as she is. What am I waiting for? Yeah, I I I totally get it. I totally you know agree. Yeah. Um, you know, there's so many people that I've worked with in, in my recovery that um, I had a sponsee once that that said, uh, you know, I don't, am I that bad? Like, I haven't had it as bad as, you know, Joe over there. I haven't had as bad as Tom over there. Like, and I, and I remember we were sitting in a meeting and I held open the door to the to the meeting place. And I said, well, if, if you want to go and experiment some more, you know, like be my guest, you know, like, yeah. but you don't have to, you don't have to, right. you can, you can stay and you can build a life. So you've that's what you've done right like you've you've built a new life for yourself you mm -hmm. know and you've done all these things so 
other than she walks Canada and other than, um, you know, your recovery app, um, what do you do on a daily basis to maintain a peace of mind or maintain, you know, your sobriety? Great question. Um, as we evolve through the process of learning to live alcohol free, uh, I think the most, and what I talk about, and I think why my messaging is really working is because I don't believe that our goal is to get sober. I do not believe our goal is to build a life we don't need to numb out from. I believe our goal is to build a life we don't need to be sober from. Yes. And what that means for me is freedom from wanting a drink. Yes, but freedom from all the things that caused me to drink. So I built a life for myself that I'm proud of, that I feel safe in, that I can connect with. And what that looks like is... I got to be really, really, I got truth, love, courage, trust, freedom. Those are my core values that have become very crystal clear to me <laughs> in my journey. And I don't do anything if it's not in line with that. Yeah, that's fantastic. One quick question before we have, have to wrap Forget. this up. Um, so you're, you're the people when you, when you said, I'm going to go recover out loud and I'm going to do this and all of these like business people, and you were talking about, you know, mixing and mingling at parties and not drinking, you know, and, and everything. Have any of them seen the new Lindsay? Have any of them seen like, have any of them like actually come up to you and said like, what are you doing? Because whatever you're doing, it's, it's the right thing. It's a great question. The men don't come anywhere near me. Wow. Like nowhere. They talk to each other about me, but they don't, they don't come anywhere near me. The women will be like, okay, what are you putting on your face? And it's, it's not what I'm putting on my face. It's what I'm not putting in my body. Right. Right. Fantastic. I'm wow. This is fantastic. Um, I I've had a blast here with you today. Um, I'm so blessed that, that we've connected, that you're able to come on and do this. I'm so proud of you for doing what you're doing with she walks Canada and, and your app. Um, you know, please anybody sitting at home listening to this or whether you're going to listen to it later on on YouTube, please reach out to Lindsay if you need help, um, you know, and and don't hesitate to ask ask her anything, you know, like just, she's very open just like I am. Or if you want to reach out to me, please reach out to me. Um, I'm, I'm more than willing to talk to anybody. Lindsay, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Um, peace and love wherever you go. Much success to you and your, your uh, She Walks Canada sober tribe, you know, um, keep on, Keep it on and, uh, and, and we'll catch you around on social media. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to Canadian Sober A. I'm Doug, your host, Simcoe County. Uh, fantastic to see you tonight. And, uh, and we'll, we'll see you guys again later. Peace and love. Bye-bye.